بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلى علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ I'd like to offer some very simple advice on how to, what to do when our Iman becomes low and our motivation is down. Ahabatifillah, all of us, we have to realize our Iman, it fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. Sometimes it's strong, sometimes it's weak. Sometimes we're motivated, sometimes we're not motivated. And I think we already know that in order to increase our Iman, some of the things the ulama have mentioned is first, of course, seeking knowledge. Talib al-ilm. Talib al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim wa muslima. Kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim male and female. And likewise, the person who seeks knowledge, bi-idnillah, they will have the thamarat al-ilm. They will have the thamarat to have the knowledge, uh, of the knowledge, which will be amal, which will be deeds, righteous deeds. So the person who is seeking knowledge truly, sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will, it will increase them in their good deeds. That's a sign that the knowledge has benefited them. So by seeking knowledge, doing righteous deeds, this will help to increase your Iman. And some of those deeds are what's contained in righteous deeds is reading the Qur'an, of course. Reciting the Qur'an. Learning the Qur'an. The Prophet Wasallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ Quran وَعَلَّمُهُ That the best of you is those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Those are the best. But what do we do when we feel like none of that is, is working out for us? Because we feel so weak. We feel so beat down by the confusion we see between Ahlul Sunnah, sometimes the fitna, or the fitna in the world that the Muslims are going through. So what do we do? Again, that is those things I mentioned are the primary prescription. But something else that you might find helpful, Ahabita Villah, that sometimes you don't feel like studying. But seeking knowledge, it isn't always based on our wants and our desires. In fact, it rarely is. So you find that the one who is truly seeking knowledge, they find difficulty because they're not always motivated to seek the knowledge. They're not always motivated to sit in a room by themselves and memorize. It takes patience to memorize the Quran. It takes patience to uh, memorize the Sunnah. So when you see your, those tulab al-am that are, Allah has raised them up, and the ulama, you see they got there through ta'ab. They weren't always motivated, but, they had, but they, they had a love to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they stuck it out, and they were patient, and Allah raised them. So along with those things, it's also finding something mubah, that you enjoy. So maybe this is not going to necessarily help you in your Iman, but it will help you pass the time to, to, to give yourself another chance to work on those things that are going to increase your Iman. So finding those things that you enjoy doing that will help you to keep from falling in sin. One of the things also I failed to mention, Habitifillah, that's very important, is Husna Suhbah, is having good companions, righteous companions, because righteous companions will remind you of Allah. Righteous commands, uh, righteous companions will help you do ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will encourage you to do the good things, and that's why the righteous companion. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, is like misk, is like the, the musk, the sweet smelling musk, that when he leaves you, he leaves a nice smell with you. So this is a similitude. Because the righteous companion, they leave you with thoughts that help you do good. 
or thoughts that help you to reflect on Allah, or thoughts that help you to reflect on your shortcomings, or thoughts that help you come closer to Allah and help you in your Iman, and motivate you to increase your Iman. Whereas the negative companion does the opposite. They leave you with thoughts of smoking more weed, of going to another club, trying a new club that has a little different music, of getting a second girlfriend because the first one's not working out, of motivating you to do the muharramat instead of the halal. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu made the similitude with a negative companion that they are like the smolt or smelt of the uh, of the blacksmith that they leave you with a dusty funky smell so this is a similitude to the negative companion because they leave you with negative they don't leave you with positive and motivation to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so very important to have good companions don't be, if you're a sister, because sisters are often alienated, especially if they're not working and they're not out and they're not married, or even if they you know, are married, they need good companions, good female companions if they don't have that in their spouse. And even along with their spouse, it's good that they have good sisters that remind them of Allah and they have positive gatherings. Not gatherings to backbite and gain more sin, not gatherings to cuss people, not gatherings to do evil, but to encourage one another in good. Those are just some of the small pieces of advice that I could think of. And as far as the mubah, mubahat, those things which are permissible, but there's no reward in them, and there's no sin in them, and there's no sin if you leave them, and there's no reward if you leave them or do them. Things like maybe doing martial arts, Things like maybe exercising, take care of your body. Things like coming out in the wilderness because it can help you reflect on Allah if you're a person who likes to do that. So do those things which sometimes you just need to get your mind together. Sometimes you just need those some other things. You don't want to just talk about Aqidah 24-7. That's very difficult. No one can, 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 can carry that. Most people cannot. Maybe there are some who are on another level, but even... The ulama, they have time with their families. They joke with their families. They love their families. And they enjoy time with their families and perhaps their companions. So this is very important to have Have those things to help you uh, focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Find some things, some activities that you enjoy doing that are lawful activities because Islam does not limit you and restrict you. In, 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 in your life. But in fact, it just gives you a halal alternative bi idnillah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.